The history of mankind is a chronicle of his achievements, of problems faced and solved, of challenges accepted, challenges from within and from the world around him, sometimes challenging his survival. As the centuries ticked away, great natural challenges were surmounted. It took a long time, but man took the rivers and harnessed them and developed complex technologies to put the resources found on this planet to work for him. The 20th century saw man meet a wide array of new challenges. We now move faster than the speed of sound, walk in space, offer new hope with a new heart. We now receive electronic pictures using satellites and manned spacecraft hovering far above the Earth. Electronic eyes record the terrain of neighboring planets and give us a new perspective of the one we live on. Another major challenge was met in this century by Enrico Fermi. Born in Italy, he assembled in America the human resources to solve a fundamental problem, the controlled conversion of matter into useful energy through nuclear fission. The result? Nuclear energy now being used in many ways to serve mankind. Nuclear energy that can help us meet one of the greatest challenges mankind has ever faced. The challenge of providing food, water, and comfort to increasing millions on this planet. of sand, arid land of little life and less water. A little more than one third of the land surface of the earth is like this. Arid wastelands sprawling endlessly, threatening starvation. Three and a half million square miles of Africa look very much like this. a million square miles of Arabia. Three hundred thousand square miles east of the Dead Sea are arid or semi-arid. Vast areas of California, Arizona and Nevada look like this. Some 43,000 square miles of Mexico and a million square miles of Australia are barren, producing little. Two hundred thousand square miles of Peru and Chile are dry and nearly lifeless. Regions that have known years without rain, where rare showers often evaporate as they touch the ground. These regions now support less than six percent of the Earth's population. As the world's population doubles, reaching six billion people, mankind is forced to find new places to accommodate the exploding population new sources of food to sustain it. Many of these arid and semi-arid zones possess very rich soils. When irrigated, they yield abundant crops. Today, the desert regions of the southwestern United States are experiencing the fastest population growth in the nation. People dwell there happily when water and power are made available to them to meet their needs suggesting that the warm, dry areas of the world may be more appealing as the Earth's population soars if water and power needs can be met. But many of these semi-tropical areas have only limited amounts of fresh water. Often it's sporadic. Often it's brackish and unfit for human use. 
Some areas depend entirely on unreliable amounts of rainfall. Water is vital for many activities, depending on the people and the complexity of the life they have developed. It is basic to the growing of crops. If the price is high, a serious problem results. In the marketplace, prices must be competitive on agricultural products. Many arid regions are located along the seacoast. The water, unlimited, but salty. Desalting the sea is one of the most promising techniques of producing water and increasing man's supply of available fresh water. By converting salt water into fresh water, we could open up many of these rich soils to agriculture, community life, and industry. Where cost is secondary, Petroleum-fired freshwater distillation plants are already operating. But many methods must be explored if man is ever to supply cities, produce food, and develop industries in arid regions at a reasonable cost. Today, it is primarily the cost of desalting seawater which delays the development of our arid coastlands. A source of energy is needed, one not tied by cost to an oil field, or a coal mine. A fuel so efficient that one kilo the size of a lemon can produce more energy than 200 tons of coal. Nuclear energy, produced by a fuel readily transportable anywhere on the face of the earth. An efficient energy source that at long last will permit mankind to develop remote and barren coastal areas into self-sufficient communities set in pleasant, quiet, and clean surroundings. With the nuclear reactor as the energy source and a desalting plant as the fresh water source, the desert may be transformed into a nuclear-powered agro-industrial complex. Designed to convert vast wastelands into the promise of tomorrow. Furnishing sufficient food for a greater population than the world has ever known. Providing jobs and raising the quality of everyday living for many thousands of people. This is not a mirage, but rather a preview of an atomic marvel of tomorrow. A milestone in man's development. A nuclear-powered agro-industrial complex that will introduce a new kind of desert agriculture where specialized farms will serve as food factories. The crops to be grown will vary from one place to another, depending on local conditions of soil and climate. The resulting crops surprisingly abundant. Several crops will be harvested each year. Estimates indicate it will take 20 inches of fresh water to produce 100 bushels of wheat per acre. With efficient farming, less than 200 gallons are needed to produce food for one man for a day. The cost of this much water? Three cents. The cost of producing the necessary fertilizer? Less than one cent per day. The steam generated by one such nuclear complex will generate sufficient low-cost electric power to manufacture the fertilizer for 30 million people, as well as to support the electrical needs of 5 million people and a number of industries, processes, and neighboring communities. The total investment for a typical nuclear-powered agro-industrial complex might approach $1 billion. The annual value of the products from such a complex could be over $300 million. One hundred million of which comes from agricultural products. 
The net return on the venture is computed to be over $100 million per year. In one such concept under consideration, large nuclear reactors will form the heart of our energy center. Reactors capable of producing 2 million kilowatts of electricity. When these reactors are coupled to a desalting plant, approximately 1 billion gallons of fresh water will be produced per day. Enough fresh water to irrigate a 300,000 acre farm complex 12 months of the year. The electrical energy produced by steam turbines in the reactors will be used industrially to make aluminum sheet and bar stock. In some areas, ammonia from electrolytic hydrogen, caustic and chlorine by brine electrolysis. Using the electric furnace process, plants will be set up to manufacture phosphorus, the base for phosphate fertilizers. The waste brine from the evaporators will be utilized in a solar salt works. To transport the products and crops produced, railroad facilities will be included in the agro-industrial complex. Docks will be required, along with other harbor facilities, for ocean import of raw materials and export of food and industrial products. The operation and support for an agro-industrial complex this size will involve a community of several hundred thousand people. A nuclear-powered agro-industrial complex like this offers new hope for many unused areas of the world. It takes little imagination to see the effects this might have on many nations possessing arid coastal areas, or how the hungry masses around the world might be fed by a number of properly located nuclear energy centers. Before such agro-industrial complexes become a reality tomorrow, people of many different professions must accept the challenges ahead and explore long-term capabilities. Money, time, and human resources must be invested. Breeder reactors must be employed to produce even cheaper electrical power. Agricultural research must increase crop yields even further, reduce the length of the growing period, hasten maturity, as well as lower water requirements. Crop strains must be developed that can be planted earlier. New ways of transforming electrical energy into the basic raw material for many heavy chemical processes and new industrial processes must be perfected. Better means of harvesting and storing crops will be required. Even more efficient agricultural equipment must be designed, manufactured, and utilized. The challenge is before us. The answer is at hand. The promise of tomorrow is almost within our grasp. Man must explore without delay this hope of bringing the coastal deserts into intensive cultivation by desalting and irrigation accompanied by additional power to foster industrial development. In a world hard pressed for food, work, industrial goods, and better living, there is no greater challenge.